So the next feature that we need is to actually create our tweets in our database so that they can be scheduled and then sent out later. So we need to create a model for our tweets and the tweet model is actually going to connect to a user so we know who is owning that tweet and then also the Twitter account. So our tweet is actually going to be connected to two other database tables. So let's go into our terminal and we'll clear that out and run Rails generate model tweet and we will define a user belongs to record or association rather and a Twitter account belongs to as well. And then we're going to need a body of our tweet which will be text um, and this is really only about 280 characters, at least right now, for Twitter. They may change that in the future. They moved it from 140 to 280. And, you know, we can leave this as a bigger text column so that we can support larger messages than just a string. So it doesn't really matter um, if you use a string here or text, but we're kind of safer in the future if we use text. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we want a publish at timestamp and we're going to call this a publish at column and a date time format so the column will be a date and a time and we can schedule our background job to publish that at that specific time and that's really all we need except we want some way of keeping track of whether or not this was actually sent and if we have a tweet ID as a string, we can submit this to Twitter and then record the tweet ID so we can know that this was sent out already. And then we can, in our interface, link you to that tweet as well. So we're going to have the tweet ID recorded there just so that we can connect up and know that it was actually sent. So let's generate that model and run Rails DB Migrate to create that. Now we can go into our routes again and add resources, tweets, and this is going to, of course, as always, map to a tweets controller.rb class tweets controller, inherit from application controller, and we want the same before action as usual of require user logged in. So anything that happens in here, we want to make sure the user is logged in. So there are actually quite a few things we need to do with our tweets controller. We need the index, we need a new action, create, we probably want to show, we're going to want um, an edit and an update, but only for tweets that haven't been posted yet, and then a destroy so we can cancel those as well. So there's quite a bit that we're going to need to do to make this all work. But first, let's go into our user model and add has many tweets. And the same thing for our Twitter accounts model. This is going to also has many tweets. So our tweet.rb will belong to both of those. Belongs to always goes on the table that has the user ID or Twitter account ID. And the has many goes on the other side of things where it doesn't have the column, the columns on the other table. So that sets up our associations, which allows us to go into our controller and define our index action. And we can say at tweets equals current dot user dot tweets. So we'll assign that database query to the variable and we'll be able to use the results of that in our views. So our app views folder tweets We'll add index.html.erb and we'll have tweets here. Um, we can do whatever we want in here, but right now we don't have a whole lot. So let's go into our nav bar and let's change the home to tweets and tweets path. And so this is now going to link to our tweets and we go to the tweets controller and render the index action in views. So now we can add the rest of the steps of this process, which is creating a new tweet, um, waiting for it to be published, and then edit, update, destroy, and then we can create the background job to actually publish that tweet to Twitter. So let's go and build out all of our views so we can create tweets, edit them, and destroy them, and then publish them to Twitter. So what we'll do here is we'll do a very similar thing to before. We're going to have a div class deflex 
um, justify content between line items center. We'll have our header in here. And then we're going to add if current user dot Twitter accounts dot any around our new tweet link. So we'll have a link to schedule a tweet and new tweet path will be where we link to and we'll have this look like a button. So class button, button primary from bootstrap. And we'll wrap that in the if statement. And the reason for that is that if you haven't connected your Twitter account yet, we don't allow you to schedule a tweet because we need to know which Twitter account we're sending it on and you don't have any. So we want to hide this button until that is connected. And so underneath this, we can say if current user uh, Twitter accounts dot none, then we can have a link to connect your Twitter account. So we'll have connect your Twitter account. <clears throat> and this will link to off Twitter just like we do on the Twitter accounts page. So we'll have button, button primary. And we could link here to the Twitter accounts page, but it's easier just to do this right on this page and send you exactly where you need to go. And then um, you don't have to jump between pages. So uh, this is good. Now we'll get a schedule tweet button if we have a Twitter account. If we remove our Twitter account and we go here, it will say, hey, connect your Twitter account before you can do anything. So we'll do that. And then we'll be able to go back to tweets, schedule a tweet, and then create our form. So let's go into our controller. We'll define our new form and um, or a new action. And then our new action is going to be very simple, tweet.new. So then we need to create our new.html.erb under app views tweets, new.html.erb. You can add a file there. I've already got one. And we can define schedule a tweet and our form. So we'll have form with at tweet, uh, and this is model at tweet do form. And we can define our fields inside of here. And they're going to be very similar to the fields that we did for our registrations and all of those forms, but we need the tweet fields here. So we're going to have our um, Twitter account. We're going to have a select drop down for that. And then we're going to have the tweet body and the time you want to publish this at. So the first field is the Twitter account. So we'll add a class MB3, so a margin bottom on there. So we get a little spacing between this and the next one. We'll have a form.label Twitter account ID. And that's what we want to save in our database. So we'll just use that name as the label. This is the column in our database. And we can do the same thing and say form.collection select which will allow us to basically generate a select box in our um, HTML, but we can use a collection. So Rails is expecting us to give it a, a relationship from active record. So we can say, here's the association of all the Twitter accounts we want you to be able to choose from. And we want to submit the ID from each one of those. Whatever you select, we want to submit the ID. And the one that we display is actually the name or username of the Twitter account. So we want to display this and we want to actually submit the ID of the Twitter account to the server. So this is just telling it which attributes of each of the Twitter accounts we want to render out. Then we can give it an empty hash for some options that we don't need to set and then another hash for a class that will be applied to the HTML. And if we do form control, it will make it look like a pretty bootstrap select. And that is really all we need to do here. Um, and we can assume that we already have a Twitter account because we have uh, connected that on the previous page before we can get to here. But you could add a link to, just like we did on the tweets index, connect your Twitter account here as well. And the reason why we would probably want to have that here is that you might want to add an additional Twitter account. And you realized once you got to this form, oh, I forgot that I didn't connect this other Twitter account. 
So that is where you might drop this in. And then we can add our other fields. So we'll grab this MB3 div again, and we'll add our form dot label for the body that we want to save in our database form dot text field body this could also be like a text area if you want a bigger um, form field so we'll say text area class form control and that is all we really need for now we'll come back to this and we'll add a character counter so that we can keep track of whether or not you're within the 280 characters and last but not least, we will go and define our um, timestamp that we want to send this at. So we'll have our form dot label publish at field, and we're going to put a div class of form control around this field. So we'll have a date time select for publish at. And we'll close that, and then we'll add the last thing here, which is a form.button to schedule our tweet, which will be a class button, button primary. So let's refresh our form and see if this works. So we have Twitter account as an error, and that is because we need this to be plural, Twitter accounts. That's the name of our association, and the associations are generally plural when you have a has many. And there we go. Now, our button here is a little bit uh, a little bit too much for our connect our Twitter account, so we'll remove that. And now we have a functional form. The date time select will actually generate five different fields, so you can choose the year, the month, the day, the hour, and the minute for the time that you submit. And this will generate it to the current time right now by default, which is okay, but you're scheduling tweets in the future, so it would probably be nice if we could set the default time to an hour from now. And we can do that by going into our tweet model, which we will talk about in the next video.